There are 149 countries around the world who are a member of China's Belt and Road Initiative, but Pakistan might be the most important partner for the future of China's growth. Pakistan shares a 596-kilometer border with Xinjiang, an autonomous territory in northwest China that was an important part of the ancient Silk Road. In 2013, China launched the BRI to revive the ancient Silk Road and connect China with countries in Asia, Europe, Africa, and beyond through a network of roads, railways, ports, and other infrastructure projects. Pakistan was one of the first countries in the world to participate in the BRI. And over the past decade, China has poured tens of billions of dollars of economic investment into the country. Together, the two nations have built the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor called CPEC, which is the flagship project of China's Belt and Road Initiative. CPEC begins in Kashgar, one of the most important cities in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region, and extends the entire length of Pakistan, finishing at the Gwadar port in southwest Pakistan. As I'll explain later in the video, this economic corridor gives China direct access to the Arabian Sea and a significantly easier pathway to securing oil and gas from China's Middle Eastern partners. CPEC's potential impact on Pakistan has been compared to that of the Marshall Plan undertaken by the United States in a post-war Europe. After World War II, the United States transferred $13 billion, that's equivalent to $173 billion in 2023, in economic recovery programs to Western European countries. The Marshall Plan was crucial to the future success of Europe, and now China is following the same pathway of the United States and making similar multi-billion dollar investments to increase trade in the region. The total investment for CPEC is estimated to be around $62 billion, with China providing most of the funding and technical expertise. Western media consistently tells us that China's BRI is a predatory debt trap and that China can't be trusted, but there's always another side of the story we must examine. How have these BRI investments helped the local population in Pakistan? The CPEC project has had a significant impact on the economies of both China and Pakistan, as well as the wider region. But quite frankly, the results of CPEC for the Pakistani economy have been quite impressive. Pakistani officials predict that CPEC will result in the creation of 2.3 million jobs between 2015 and 2030 and add nearly 2.5 percentage points to the country's annual economic growth. From January to December 2021, the bilateral trade between Pakistan and China was $27.8 billion, a year-on-year -year increase of 59%. And as of 2022, CPEC has enhanced Pakistan's economic exports and development capacity and is now providing one-fourth of Pakistan's total electricity. But there's more to the story. Since China's BRI project launched 10 years ago, the Chinese government has welcomed 149 countries and invested in an amazing 1,100 projects throughout the globe. Out of the 1,100 projects, the CPEC investment is quite possibly the most important one for China's future success for three strategic reasons. The first is energy security. China is the world's largest energy consumer and relies heavily on imported oil and gas. Over the past decade, China has risen to become Saudi Arabia's biggest trading partner, but also its largest oil customer, buying over a quarter of the country's oil exports. Last December, China signed a 27-year deal with Qatar to access the country's liquefied natural gas. These deals have secured the energy China needs to continue driving its economy in the future. But a simple question remains. How does the oil and gas travel from the Middle East into China's borders? Before CPEC, there was only one route available. Oil tankers would have to depart the Middle East, travel around the southern tip of India, through the Strait of Malacca between Indonesia and Malaysia, and finally around Vietnam before landing in a Chinese port. There are two problems with this route. The first is the extraordinary distance oil tankers must travel to deliver these resources to China. The journey I just described is roughly 12,000 kilometers in length, but there is an even bigger issue. What happens if war or conflict breaks out? Countries could simply block the Strait of Malacca and hamper China's ability to access the energy it needs to fuel its economy. But CPEC fixes both of these problems. Now Middle Eastern energy exports can simply travel to Pakistan's Gwadar port and travel along the economic corridor through Pakistan and directly into China's Xinjiang autonomous region. This is an ideal scenario, as Xinjiang is home to the largest oil and gas bearing area in China. With CPEC now in place, the once 12,000 kilometer journey of Middle Eastern oil has been reduced to just 2,400 kilometers, and CPEC is saving China almost $2 billion 
a year on energy imports. The next reason CPEC is vital to China's future is it allows China to access new markets in Central Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East. The project has helped boost China's trade and investment in these regions and reduce its dependence on exports to the West. As we know, China is engulfed in a trade war with the United States, and the U.S.-China relationship has deteriorated significantly in the past five years. For a better insight, listen to this clip from Kevin Rudd, the former Australian Prime Minister who speaks fluent Mandarin and has become one of the best Western analysts of China in recent years. Xi Jinping began a national science, technology, innovation, self-sufficiency drive back in 2015, even before Donald Trump's trade war, even before Joe Biden was heard of, at least as being the President of the United States. So that was part of the existing track of what I describe as China's economic nationalism. But if you look carefully at the text of what Xi has said in the last couple of days, he said, we in the future have to be absolutely clear about two things, providing for our national self-sufficiency in food and agriculture, and providing for our national uh, self-sufficiency in manufacturing, science and technology. And he said, because we cannot in the future rely upon international market supply. And what he's saying is, there's going to be more of where this has come from in the United States by way of trade, export and other sanctions. Xi Jinping knows the United States will not stop its efforts to contain China in the future. Therefore, it's vital for China to become more self-sufficient and build economic partners where it can. And Pakistan has provided that opportunity for several decades now. The third and final reason is regional stability. China is using CPEC as a tool to promote regional stability and counter terrorism in Pakistan. By investing over $62 billion in the country, China hopes that CPEC will promote economic development and reduce poverty in Pakistan, which could help address some of the root causes of extremism in the region. But as we continue to explore details in the China-Pakistan relationship, one of the biggest trends emerging in the past five years is the metal export from Pakistan to China. Through CPEC, Pakistan has started to diversify its exports and increase production of metals such as copper and iron. These metals are in high demand in China, which is the world's largest consumer of metals. The increase in metal sales to China has been a major benefit for Pakistan's economy. It has helped generate new sources of revenue and diversify Pakistan's exports beyond its traditional industry of textiles. Prior to CPEC, the top shares of Pakistan's metal exports were split amongst Afghanistan, China, Japan, the United States, and the UAE. However, since 2017, trade with China has exploded. One of the key metals China is importing from Pakistan is copper. In 2014, Pakistan exported less than $50 million in copper to China. By 2020, that number had risen to over $410 million. China is now the world leader in renewable energy and dominates industries such as solar power and electric vehicles. China is forecasted to sell an incredible 9 million EVs and plug-in hybrids in 2023, an increase of 35% from the year prior. Maintaining a steady inflow of necessary components is certainly within China's best interest. And this example of metal sales from Pakistan to China represents the exact mission of the BRI. China is able to access the crucial materials needed to drive its economy while also making significant investments in BRI countries to also drive their own economies. Look at this graph that illustrates Pakistan's top import sources by percentage. Prior to the launch of the BRI, Pakistan imported approximately 15% of its goods from China and 5% from the United States. Fast forward to 2021 and Chinese imports have doubled in percentage, now accounting for 30% of Pakistani imports, while U.S. imports have remained unchanged and still account for only 5% of Pakistani imports. What does this mean for U.S. hegemony? Some Pakistani scholars say China has already achieved hegemony in Pakistan. Look at this article from the Observer Research Foundation, which states, for Pakistan, China is the new America. Tofik Saradin, a PhD student studying international development and cooperation at Nagoya University in Japan, shares an interesting insight. Multipolarity, or a world with two or more hegemons, has accompanied analysis of similar gains China has made at the expense of the United States and the international liberal order, especially as China's imprints on developing states becomes more glaring. An increasing number of states are joining China's international institutions, such as the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, and more are adopting the One China position at the government and United Nation levels. But let's get back to the central question of this video and examine how Pakistan's close relationship with China has influenced local life 
in Pakistan. I found an article from Western Media that shed some valuable insights into how local Pakistanis truly feel about China. Last year, The Diplomat published this article entitled, Pakistanis Perceive China as Their Best Friend. While perceptions of China have soured in many parts of the world, very few Pakistanis have anything but positive sentiments towards Beijing. In a poll conducted last year, respondents were asked two simple questions about China. Number one, what first comes to your mind when you think of China? And number two, has your view of China gotten better or worse in the past three years? For the first question, the most common answer was the word friend. Pakistani people perceive the Chinese as friendly and hardworking and view China as a strong, developed superpower. For the second question, over 85% indicated their views of China have improved in the past three years. Only 9% indicated a worsening of their perception and 6% stayed neutral. So why do the vast majority of Pakistanis support China and feel so positively towards Beijing? The reality is Pakistan is rather isolated in South Asia, and what drives China's popularity is the fact that China is Pakistan's one true ally. When the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan last year, U.S.-Pakistani relations turned cold. The exact same scenario unfolded in the early 1990s, when after Soviet forces withdrew from Afghanistan, the U.S. no longer needed Pakistan's support and regional intelligence. With the U.S. not interested in the future of Pakistan, China will be there to fill the void. And in fact, this has been the secret recipe for China's Belt and Road success. Go places where the U.S. typically overlooks, work with countries the United States doesn't have time for, and slowly build the BRI into the world's largest trading network. Everyone, thank you for making it to this point in the video, and I hope you enjoyed today's deep dive analysis into China's Belt and Road Initiative inside of Pakistan. If you're interested in learning more about the BRI, click this playlist to watch my entire series of BRI videos. I'm Cyrus. Thanks for spending some time with me today here on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.